Okay, friends, we're gonna sit on my deck and we're gonna talk homeschooling. I asked, I'm trying to get comfy here, um, asked a bunch of questions on Instagram. I asked on Instagram, what do you wanna know about homeschooling? And these were the responses. So these are gonna be in no particular order. I'm just gonna read them as I printed them off. How do you get your kids to listen and pay attention during school time? To start off with, I resisted with having a set school time, but I find that my kids respond better when we have a set school time and that like, okay, we start school at nine o'clock in the morning and they know what to expect. They know what happens during school time and they know if they work, they get done. They're done well before lunch and they know what to expect and this helps them listen and pay attention better. Where do you go for homeschool inspiration? I love to follow different people on Instagram. Um, just people I come across, I don't know. I don't necessarily have a specific place I go for inspiration. How do you fit it all in? We only do about an hour of school, but with chores, I struggle to fit it all in. Um, more questions, how do you fit it in with younger children and household chores? Lots of questions about how do you fit in homeschooling into your day as well as other chores. Here's the thing, during your school season, during school days, it's harder to get extra things done. It's just, you have to let go of a certain amount of things during school days and seasons of school work because you can't get it all done. What are your true priorities? Okay, we have a kitten out here somewhere. Hey, kitty, kitty. Hey, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty, kitty. Come on, kitty, kitty. Where is that kitty? We have an itty bitty kitty. So you just, you're not gonna fit it all in. Something has to give. And it's up to you figuring out what it is. Um, for me, I quite often get a bit of housekeeping help, like a once a month deep clean. That really makes a big difference for me during homeschooling. Um, it might be that you buy more convenience meals. It might be that, I don't know. You have to figure out where it works for your family. What have you liked for teaching early reading and first grade math? I used um, ABC, See, Hear, Do, and I did a review of it, which I'll link. Um, we like that for reading and for math. We just, for gr first grade, we just use Kumon math books. Curriculum ideas. So we use Gather Round homeschool curriculum, which I will link to. I did a review of it, and we really enjoy that. That's the first curriculum that we've really used. Well, there's another cat out there that thought I was calling it. I know Mac went to a nature school in the beginning. What was it like starting out when you switched? Did you experiment? Were you able to plug in with people right away? Um, so yes, Mac, we started out homeschooling and then I kind of had a health crisis and we put Mac in a local elementary school that he was in a nature class. So they spent half the time outdoors. And... Um, that is a big wasp that just flew by me. Then uh, the pace of school was just too much for Mac. So after about a year and a half, we went to, we actually did a hybrid for two years, one year, I can't remember, where he went to school part-time and we did homeschool part-time. Um, and then when we moved here, um, two full school years ago, three school years ago. I lost track of time, guys. We moved here in 2017. So 2017, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. So we've done three school years here now, full-time homeschooling. It takes time to find your crowd. We didn't really have a true homeschooling group until this last school year. So our third full-time homeschooling year um, in which I cultivated it myself. I asked another homeschooling mom if she knew of people in our similar family dynamics, rural living, Christian, etc. 
and she did and we managed to pull together a homeschool group with more kids than I would have imagined. Um, set up and structure with different ages needing help at the same time. I have ages six and three. So your three-year-old is going to be like coloring or playing puzzles or just like doing their own thing and if they're happy doing their own thing then just leave them because I require nothing of a three-year-old for schoolwork. Um, for six-year-old, so for me that would be like kindergarten, kindergarten grade one, I expect very, very little of them. Kindergartener, I would actually expect almost nothing. Schoolwork wise, maybe half an hour or less a day. Grade one is the first grade that we require schoolwork uh, for our family and required in our province. And even at that, less than an hour a day. And you just both sit at the table and you're going to be pulled multiple different directions and you just have to figure it out. It's hard one to explain. I'm struggling to get my oldest kiddo to do her inside chores and homework without complaining. That's when I have kind of repeats that I keep saying, we do our chores with a happy heart, we do our chores with a happy heart, and if they're not doing their chores with a happy heart, they get more chores to practice doing chores with a happy heart. Um, your chores are not just, your chores are not punishment, your chores are because you're a human and because you live in our family, you are also required to do jobs. How do you pick curriculum? Do you know, do you work with any programs or the public school? So we, in our, I'm gonna answer a bunch of questions at once here. We're in British Columbia, Canada. I have allergies and my nose is itchy. <laughs> We're in British Columbia, Canada. British Columbia has pretty good house homeschooling laws in my opinion. They're different in every province. For us, we can just go, hey government, we're homeschooling. And they go, okay, cool, have fun. And that's all that's required. That's what's required to be legal. Your kid will not have um, like a graduation. Like they won't have a transcript. They won't have, um, they won't graduate but you, they can always like take a GED or whatever to graduate and get equivalent to get into college courses. And I know many families that have done that and have no problems. Second option is that you can register with a distance learning program where you, with a BC registered teacher, you work together to create a plan, a student learning plan for each of your school age children for how you're gonna meet the provincial standards. The provincial standards are very flexible. There's no required hours. There, um, if your kid is not reaching those standards by the end of the year, it's not the end of the world for the most part. Um, we have to report to our teachers, send like pictures of our workbooks, pictures of our activities, that sort of things on a fairly regular basis. And in exchange, we get some funding to spend on sports and school supplies. School supplies, uh, sorry, our funding for Christian distance learning has drastically changed. It is now, it was $1,000 per student, now it is $350 per student. And um, I debated not registering them with this program, but really when it came down to it, $350 times three kids is still $1,000 and I maybe spend 10 hours a year on reporting and phone calls with the teacher so it's still well worth my time. I could switch to a public school distance learning and I would get more funding but the public schools don't acknowledge or allow you to buy anything that is um, Bible related. So if your curriculum is Bible related, they won't even really acknowledge it. Or Bible based, I should say. I really love our teacher. She is really, really good. And for me, that's worth it not switching to somewhere else. 
what do the littles do like Rowan while you teach the older ones? So when Rowan was a baby last year, she was born in April. So in October when we started school, she was six months old and we did schoolwork during morning nap time. When I homeschooled with a toddler boy because we were taking care of my sister's kids full time while they built their house, we homeschooled during his afternoon nap time because trying to school with him was like, didn't work. Rowan will be one and a half when we start school um, in the fall and there's a good chance we will do it during her nap time or she will sit in her high chair with snacks or toys or something. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to look just yet. It'll depend on what sort of kid she is when she's 18 months old. Will this look different with Mary's home? So. An exciting thing for our family is that Marius no longer works outside the home. Um, uh, venison for dinner is our full-time business and he... Oh no, chickens are squawking at something. And he is home full-time. So we talked a bit about it and our plan is that we are going to in August or September plan our school year and figure out what resources we need so we can order those and we're going to start in October. The last half of September we have moose hunting and the first week of October Mary's has a guys hunting trip so we're going to start after that and we do best in the like divide and conquer. So what divide and conquer means for us is that we assign like okay he's going to be in charge of science and social studies and history and I'm going to be in charge of math and writing and we decide what resources we're using for those and we are in charge of teaching those and maybe we teach them both at the same time or like within the same time block or maybe I teach some in the morning and he teaches some in the afternoon but either way we are going to just divide up in teaching the different subjects and um, go from there. We work best like that with all things. Um, like there's very much areas of our house that like he does it or I do it because then there's no, well I did it yesterday, can't you do it today? And like, oh I'm busy, can't you just do it? And then this resentment builds and this and that. For us we find it a lot easier if it's just very cut and dried, this is your job, this is my job. If one person can't do their job that day for some reason, like hey, can you do this job for me? And it just eliminates that icky conversation where we're both like, Ugh, I don't feel like doing the meat birds. Like, oh, I got other stuff I'm doing. Can't you just do it? No, the meat birds are his job. They were my job. And then we switched recently and now they're his job. And I don't worry about it. I don't have to worry about it at all because I know he's got it taken care of. In the same way that he doesn't ever worry about like what the kids have for breakfast because that's what I take care of. So. The two of us don't need to waste mental energy worrying about the same job. Where to even start? I would start by looking, first of all, at your homeschooling laws for where you live, which you can just Google that. And secondly, then I would start looking at different homeschooling styles. And as much as it's fun to look at what you would prefer, try to look at your children's learning style even more because when Mac was in kindergarten we chose a curriculum called Oak Meadow and then when Hamish was kindergarten and Mac was grade three we did very briefly five in a row and both of those curriculums were my ideals they were not what worked best for them my children prefer a cut and dried more of a workbook approach for their base subjects. They wanna just know the expectation, I have to do one page or I have to do two pages and I get it done and I'm done. They didn't appreciate the circle times of the Waldorf and all that jazz. What are some of the best Canadian resources for curriculum? Um, we use Amazon. Um, Canadian Home Education Resources is a website we use as well. Um, as a minimalist, how do you decide which manipulatives and books to purchase? 
So we don't buy manipulatives. We use what we have at home, whether it's like dried beans or whatever. We just, we don't buy manipulatives. What books to purchase. So in my experience, if we're doing a unit on say North American birds, I spend a good amount of time curating a supply of library books on North American birds and different birds and my kids looked at none of them. It was not worth my time. So I do not get additional books from the library. I actually don't even pick books for my kids anymore. Um, they pick all their own books. Either we buy from Book Outlet which I'll actually give you a coupon code that you can get $10 off your first order. They either buy books from Book Outlet or they pick books from the library or they tell me what books they want. When I buy books, they don't seem to be the ones they want to read. It works out best if they pick their own books. Of course, I approve the books, but it's best if they pick the books. Scheduling ideas. So I get for us, we schedule our school day. So year wise, we actually, Actually, I'm just gonna refer you to a video called You Can Set Your Own Homeschool Schedule. It'll be linked below. I did a whole video on it. What is the most challenging part of homeschooling? Most challenging part of homeschooling is um, accepting that you're not messing up your kids and embracing that um, what you're doing is enough and you are enough and you are smart enough to teach your kids and they will learn eventually, even if they're having a hard time catching on to things. And um, what else? Yeah, they, you're not messing up your kids. Basically, the first couple years, you're gonna have like serious self-doubt. Serious, serious self-doubt. You gotta push through that. There's gonna be days that you go lay in your bed and cry because you don't know why you're doing this. Push through, folks. Push through. I think this is where it's important to have a family mission statement as to why you're homeschooling. So when you have those days where you're like, I'm just messing them up, I should just put them in school, what am I even doing? You can go back to why you're even doing it. So our family homeschools to give our children the time and space they need to learn and the time and space they need to be children. We find the pace in which they expect children to learn and to mature in schools is faster than we want. So we homeschool to give our children the time and space they need to be children and to learn. What is your favorite way to teach reading and writing and how do you know when they are ready? My boys took their sweet time reading and writing and I just had to trust that they were slowly making progress. We tried when Hamish was in kindergarten to start picking up reading and that was a no-go. Then we tried when Hamish was in grade one to start teaching reading and that was also a no-go. Finally, when he was in grade two, he wanted to read, he was motivated to read, and now he's doing a good job on reading and it just takes time. Mm -hmm. How to keep a preschooler trying a skill they find boring? Having trouble with tracing letters. I don't think a preschooler needs to learn to write letters. If your preschooler's not into it, don't do it. Um, wait till they're kindergarten. And if they're kindergarten and they still don't want to do it, Wait till they're grade one. If they're in grade one, then we require them to do it. Before then, if they really don't want to do it, it is not a mountain I want to die on. How to manage with so many different ages, especially with non-school aged littles. So our curriculum, Gather Round, has a teacher book that I read and then all the kids have a workbook that they work on based on their skill and age level. We do additional math and printing practice and Mac has to do French because that's a required second, second language. This simplifies it because we're all working on the same subject and my part is the same and then I can just help them with their workbooks 
and it makes it so much easier to teach multiple grades. How do you store everyone's books? We have a bookshelf in our guest bedroom where everything's just shoved. I'll organize it before school starts again. Where do you even start? I've done some looking but was quick to get overwhelmed. It is so easy to get overwhelmed. Um, I really just encourage you to look at your your stand, your homeschool laws where you live so you even know what you have to do. How do you do it? I know that this is a big question, but homeschooling is just daunting. So here's the thing. Sc homeschooling is work. Sending your kids to school is work. That morning rush of getting everybody out the door and fed and lunch packed and then the afternoon waking up sleeping kids and going to get them from the bus or whatever, that just about did me in every day. Getting back to school every day just about did me in. I would rather homeschool than have that chaotic morning rush. Starting our day on that chaotic morning rush every day. And yes, there is ways to make it less chaotic, but for the most part, trying to get kids out the door early in the morning is always chaotic. So, like some people say, oh, I just love sending my kids off on the school bus every morning. And that's great. And if that works for you, keep doing it. I'm not telling you not to do it. I'm just saying, if you find it difficult to send your kids to school every day, it's no harder to homeschool. It's a different kind of hard. What is your curriculum that you sent to your district? I need help. I sent the gather round to my district. How do you manage your toddlers? I think I already answered that one. How do you fit in with younger children and household chores? I think I already kind of talked about that one. I like to block my day. Um, so like the first morning block is when I get work done and I milk the cow and we have breakfast. And then we have a schoolwork block and then after this, and quite often during the schoolwork block I might be puttering around in the kitchen because I can be making muffins while answering their questions and that sort of thing. And that's why we do school in the kitchen so that it's easier for me to help them and we're not stuck in another room. Some people like to go to another room because then they don't have distractions. It's up to you. And then we have lunch time, free time, quiet time, whatever you want to call it. And then after lunch, we have a block of getting some sort of project done. So if it's laundry day, we're going to be changing sheets and putting laundry away and that sort of thing. If it's cleaning day, we're going to be cleaning, etc., etc. Then we have afternoon chores, animals, milking, dinner time, clean up, kids to bed. And then it's the parent chunk because our kids go to bed by about 7.30 and they don't go to sleep at 7.30. The boys certainly don't fall asleep then. But we're done parenting for the day. You, um, yeah, you get to read in your room. You can quietly play Lego in your room, but mommy and daddy need time together on their own with the quiet to be good parents. To be a good parent, I need some quiet time every evening. How many hours a day? Well, sometimes there is requirements where you live, so you need to look at that. We don't have any requirements where we live. We get everything done usually in under two hours. If our school day pushes into three hours, something's not going so great there. Um, although it would be maybe three hours if we included, like after they do their book work, they do piano practice, and then they can do reading eggs and math seeds. So maybe if we include all that, maybe we'd be three hours, maybe. Usually we're two hours or less. What are good life skills that can be incorporated as school? So basically just all our stuff, like cooking and baking is math and science and building stuff that needs to be built and sewing. Like these are all, like in our province, these are, um, classified as applied skills and design and it's required that Mac has an applied skills and design project for every trimester so that can be like him baking it can be him building something it can be him sewing it's really not too crazy did we answer the questions here 
I think we may have. So, I hope I answered all your questions. If I didn't answer all your questions, you can shoot me a message or you can comment here and I'll reply. It'd be best if you commented here because then other people can see them. Thank you very much for watching. I'm so glad you joined me here. And I hope if you are really feeling pulled and called to homeschooling that you'll just go for it. Just go for it. You'll figure it out. It'll be fine. You'll do great.